Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is a discussion on person-centered care, diagnostic hearing evaluations, ethical selling, and reasonable accommodation, and how all of this ties together. There's a great deal of valuable information for you on how to view hearing loss and how to deal with hearing loss. And you will see an example of a reasonable accommodation request. Our panel includes Mr. Fani Dutoy, Senior Specialist, Hearing Instrument Impairment and Deaf Affairs at South Africa's National Council of and for Persons with Disabilities. Fani is co-founder of the Road to Independence, a more holistic approach toward the integration of those with hearing loss with consideration for their functional needs and potential. Next, we have Mr. Oliver Von Borstel, CEO of Masters of Business Development, founder of the Ethical Selling Concept, and president of the Swiss Chamber of Commerce in the Netherlands. And then, yours truly. I'm founder and president of Each Ear LLC and administrator of Hearing Test Prep com. Fani, would you start us off, please? Yeah, thank you for the wonderful opportunity. I think we can start by saying, asking the question why a diagnostic evaluation is important to any person with a mild to profound hearing loss as our starting point this afternoon. A hearing evaluation may give the person and his family clarity regarding the following four concepts. What is an impairment? Secondly, what is disability? When can you be considered as a person with a disability? And then, as you mentioned, what is meant by reasonable accommodation? Now, what is an impairment? Let me see what is in line with the concept. An impairment is a perceived or an actual feature in a person's body or functioning that may result in a limitation, a loss of activity, or a restricted participation. It's important to note that the International Classification of Disease, ICD, could be utilized for purposes of defining the five different impairments, physical, sensory, that includes hearing and sight, et cetera, intellectual, psychosocial, and neurological impairments. I have a sensory neural hearing impairment. I see the images of an intact cochlea, as well as a cochlea damaged by noise. Now, the left-hand side, you see the intact on the right-hand side of the screen, the damaged cochlea that results in a limitation a loss of activity or a restricted participation as per definition. If we understand what is an impairment, then it's just the next step to see what is disability, the concept of disability in general then. If disability is not an impairment, what is disability then? The United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, used in CRPD 2006, does not attempt to define disability per se, but rather recognize disability as an evolving concept. So impairment is what happened to you. Disability is a concept. Disability is imposed by society when a person with a physical, psychosocial, intellectual, neurological, or sensory impairment is denied access to full participation in all aspects of life. And when society of individuals fails to uphold the rights and the specific needs of persons with impairments. Let me explain it by means of a case study. For example, in South Africa, access to television news. The reality worldwide is that the vast majority of persons with hearing loss are not sign language users. But what is the situation in South Africa? On television news, as we say, disability is imposed by society. And there you see 
where no captions and only a sign language interpreter is available on television news. This means persons with hearing loss not using sign language as a primary method of communication is completely excluded. What is the solution? Providing of captions as well as a sign language interpreter as indicated on screen. So in terms of definition for disability then is disability is imposed by society. So when we go for diagnostic evaluations and interaction with professionals, this concepts will give us then clarity as persons with hearing loss in terms of what is the impairment and what is the disability. So disability has nothing to do with ability, but everything to do with discrimination. So the fact that I'm a practitioner is what I do for a living. So my deafness, my impairment has nothing to do with my disability. Disability is about discrimination, exclusion. Then the question is, who are persons with disabilities then? If we understand the impairment, what's the concept of disability? Who are the people that's affected by disability? Who are the persons with a disability? Persons with disabilities include those who have a perceived or actual physical, and then it comes again with the psychosocial, intellectual, neurological and sensory impairments, which as a result of barriers, various barriers. And it can be a attitudinal barrier, a communication barrier, physical barrier, or information barrier are hindered in participating fully and effectively in society on an equal basis with others. So disability is imposed when the barriers exist. And there on screen, we see the four barriers that disable people. For us, with sensory impairments, four barriers disable us, imposed on us. Because disability is imposed, then in terms of global legislation, we are entitled to reasonable accommodation. Now, what is reasonable accommodation? Reasonable accommodation refers to the necessary and appropriate. It might be a modification. It can be an adjustment that can be made. The provision of assistive devices or technology, not imposing a situation. In other words, what is reasonable in the workplace for an employer? What is reasonable for the employee with a hearing impairment? It's not a forced accommodation, it's negotiation. That's why role players must understand what impairment means and what disability is. And then why and how they must make provision to overcome the barriers as previously identified. And the only way you can do it is by making provision with these four aspects, modifications, adjustments, assistive devices, and technology. It's about equality, inclusion. If I may, Fani, Chief Medical Officer at ARP Services, Charlotte Ye, calls for <coughs> manufacturers to design for all and design for accessibility. This is synonymous with universal design. And not only is this the right thing to do and the fair thing to do, but it's obviously the smart thing to do. True what you say a reasonable request, what a reasonable man is prepared to accommodate, to include. Now, the, you see on screen again, it's a reasonable request asking subtexting as well as interpretation as per definition. So it's an easy concept, but people must just understand, forget about the legislation, we must, empower our persons with hearing loss that and the role players that they can say no it's not only a legislation is the right thing to do to make accommodation to accommodate all thank you fani the work that you do my friend is impacting south africa and the world and i agree with every word you said now i'll pass the baton to our friend Ambassador Oliver von Borstel, 
who will talk about ethical selling. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yes, I'm uh, calling myself the expert of ethical selling. Because uh, when it is about hearing aid solutions, uh, it should be about the right solution and not about any model, uh, brand or price. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, uh, in ethical selling, uh, we distinguish between product selling, uh, which you see on the right uh, left side, uh, where Companies in our industry just want to sell, regardless whether it's actually the right solution for the client or not. On the other side, in uh, ethical selling, uh, they use solution selling. It's a term uh, uh, from the uh, selling world. Uh, it means that an, an expert, uh, actually a consultant, uh, uh, ask open-ended questions in order to define, to give an advice about uh, what, what would be right for that client. So in the question is, uh, when, when you ask the question, what is ethical selling? We could say what, what is not ethical selling is everything which has to do with uh, push or manipulation of a client to buy. But unfortunately, there are many in the industry, they just don't care what, what is right. They just want to sell. They are, uh, it's not only uh, big boxes who have that behavior. It's also might, might be also the, the coming OTC devices, which many uh, producers claim this is the right stuff you need. In ethical selling, one thing is clear, the, the value of a hearing aid solution should uh, symbolically weigh heavier than the price a model or a brand. It is about, it's actually an ethical selling, it is about to improve the quality of life of, of all involved. Ethical selling is actually uh, uh, based on the, the PCC, the person-centered care model was defined by the IDA Institute. And it has as a goal that whoever needs a, a hearing aid solution, it should improve the quality of life. Otherwise, it's not the right solution. Also, uh, in the uh, Cambridge Calgary guide, it is described that when you have an assessment meeting, which is actually based on person-centered uh, communication, that it, it needs to have a professional structure. It follows certain steps, which I will go into it in, in the next slide, but the most important thing is in such an assessment meeting with a client is building up a trust relationship. So also as in the core of ethical selling is that it's not about the client itself who needs the, the quality of uh, life improved. It's also spouses, uh, it's family members, which are uh, dealing with, uh, with the client, which, which uh, uh, complain about the situation which is going on. But it's more than that. It can even be uh, caregivers who, who uh, profit from an improved quality of life. In the ethical selling model, it's it's about what I said. It's not about the most uh, most uh, expensive hearing aid solution. It's the opposite. It must be, regardless what the price of a hearing aid solution is, it must always be the individual best and most optimal hearing aid solution which means that audiologists have to listen to clients. Um, it's in, a, in an assessment meeting, it's about to discover clients' needs or the needs of a spouse or maybe a family member which is uh, with the client. It goes through certain steps. Might, might be 50 minutes, it might be two and a half hours, I always say, it's, it has to, to last as long as it needed until an advice can be given about this individual best, most optimal hearing aid solution. So again, 
there are clients which have, which you see on the left, bottom left side, they have, uh, although elderly people or very old people, they're still very active and have a proactive uh, life circumstances. But on the opposite, they are uh, clients which are, which suffer uh, dementia or just uh, don't leave the room very often. So it always must be the value, the value of a, a solution must be uh, a heavier uh, than the price. So, which means that those with the passive like surf, 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 uh, circumstances, I'm sorry, it's it's not uh, it's not necessary that they need just an amplifier. Maybe well, if this is the individual best uh, and most optimal solution. But in practice, this is this is different. It it might be that although they are passive in their lives that they need a sophisticated hearing aid solution. But we have to find out what, what is would be the best for them. In my uh, ethical selling uh, uh, practices model, one thing is clear, it's based on person-centered care, but it doesn't stop when, uh, when a client has said, yes, okay, I accept your advice, Mr. Audiologist. After sales services, actually all the services uh, you have to provide uh, to a client the coming three to five years, maybe even longer, are crucial in, su in supporting the quality of life, the improvement of the quality of life. So for me, in my model, it's I, I call ethical selling is ac actually the basis of uh, the complete client journey. It goes, it, it starts, with the assessment meeting, or even before, Jeffrey will address that in a minute. And when they advise a hearing aid solution, of course, uh, the, the client has to go through an experience period until he's satisfied, but it doesn't stop there. The goal of ethical selling is what, what you can read on the, on the bottom of this slide, is that they create a client fan. Regardless what the solution was, whether it was a cheap solution or an expensive solution, an advanced solution, a, a top high-end solution, a, cl a client fan must be created because it's very important in business. Only client fans do the proactive word of mouth, recommending the clinic or uh, the audiologist in person. So. What, what I already have said, uh, look, um, creating uh, client fans is, is, is very, very important. When you take artists, uh, uh, rock bands or whatsoever, they, they would have no income uh, if, if they couldn't uh, create uh, fans buying their music or uh, watching their music. music. So it's actually for me an underlying level on person-centered care that the work an audiologist does was so good that uh, the clients recommend them. So this is what I wanted uh, uh, to tell you in brief about ethical selling. Uh, there is much, much, much more uh, behind it. And I would love if you contact me to ask, uh, to answer all your questions. Thank you, Oliver. You my friend are a true leader and your service makes us better communicators and better people. Thank you. A, that was terrific. Bonnie and Oliver, another example of reasonable accommodation for people who wear hearing aids is our award-winning and patented groove button technology. People with physical limitations have significant difficulty inserting the hearing aid speaker into their ear for a variety of reasons. First, physical limitations. They may have arthritis, dexterity issues, numbness, tremor, a whole variety of elbow issues, shoulder issues, all sorts of issues that make it difficult to maneuver and wiggle that speaker into the ear. The speaker itself is small and uh, the fingertip just slips off and past it often. And many people have ear canals that angle and bend. I've seen so many of them 
that you would just wouldn't believe how they angle right from the beginning and then do 90 degree bends. They go in different directions. Each ear is different. And uh, so people struggle, you know, and if people aren't wearing their hearing aids, it, they don't wear them because if they can't get them in, they just kind of hang there. First, they're, if they're not sufficiently deep, they're not getting the um, prescribed amplification. So they're not doing their job. They're not utilizing the technology. And I've had people tell me that they don't use them because if they're not in correctly, then they just kind of hang there. They're afraid of losing them. They drop them once and that's it. They put them in the dresser drawer. So I invented this assistive device to make it easier, much easier for everyone. Groove button technology is ergonomically designed for the fingertip. People use their fingertip to insert the speaker into their ear. And so with groove button technology, the fingernail and fingertip fit into it. So people can control and manipulate the hearing aid speaker. So they easily wiggle it into the ear canal. It has a universal designs. So it's both designed for all, which ARP is promoting, and designed for accessibility, which ARP is also promoting. This is a, re uh, a reasonable accommodation request of the hearing aid manufacturers to make their products easier to insert for people with the physical limitations, people with challenging ear canals, and for caregivers. Caregivers have to manipulate that speaker into their uh, loved one, their family's uh, ear canals. And this is a reasonable request. This would accommodate the information barriers that uh, Fani spoke of, the communication barriers, and the physical barriers. You can see more information and join the movement on eachear.com. Another related product of each year is our recently launched Hearing Test Prep Facebook group. This tool helps people prepare for their diagnostic evaluation. And in the process, it fosters a partnership with the hearing care professional. Very important. It replaces the tired old stigmas with persuasive rationale to update the cultural attitude. It promotes hearing health care is the smart move. And it promotes hearing health care. That's hearingtestprep.com. So let's review. Yep, the process. It. Yeah, thank Sorry. you. Yeah, thank you very much, Bonnie. Um, the process of reasonable accommodation. First, you see the categories of impairment and the barriers imposed on people when they do not provide reasonable accommodations. Those barriers include physical, attitudinal, remember ethical selling and hearing healthcare is a smart move, information and communication. And remember, reasonable accommodation is reasonable. It helps everybody, including the accommodator. Reasonable accommodation is smart and it makes us strong. Finally, we need each other. We are all here to ethically serve each other. So let's all join together with the band. We thank you for your time and attention. We'd love for you to reach out to us. So I'll leave our contact information up for a bit. Thank you.